Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How you doing? Oh, big pork here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, cold today, isn't it? Uh, we've just done that video, haven't we, about Billy Joe, Frank Warren. Did Frank Warren deliver for Billy Joe? Uh, you'd have to say yeah, wouldn't you? Uh, the WBC, a lot of people keep emailing me and they keep saying, Russ, uh, why aren't you doing a video about Dillian White uh, and the WBC, the conspiracy that the WBC have got with Wilder? to stop Dillian White getting to Wilder. Right. <laughs> you know this? This bothers me. This really bothers me, to be honest, of course. Look, this is how I look at it, right? This is how I look at it. Dillian White, you've just seen him fight somebody now, right? He looked awful against Marius Vak, didn't he? How old is Marius Vak? How old is he? Lucas Brown were 40. How old is Marius Vak? Go on, Box Rec and have a look how, Marius, how old Marius Vak is. Go on, Box Rec and have a look how old Alexander Povetkin is. Alexander Povetkin is 42 years of age next summer. He's 42 year old next summer. Alright, <laughs> he's in his 40s. Andy Ruiz, will Andy Ruiz fight happen? Uh, yeah, I think it will. I think it will. Is it a risky fight? Yeah. Dillian White needs to get a pay-per-view in before he fights Joshua. Because otherwise, Billy, Billy, uh, sorry, Billy Joe White. Dillian White needs to get this fight with Andy Ruiz sort of. Otherwise, he's just going to be the man that missed the boat, isn't he? That's what I think. I think he's just going to be the man that missed the boat. So I don't, I don't mean that to sound harsh, but sometimes I, I, I can be, I can be very harsh. Uh, I can be very harsh. Now, so we've done the Dillian White one. Now, let's have a chat about is Dillian White being frozen out by the WBC? Well, I don't think the WBC have treated Dillian White very good, to be honest. But there's a, there's a due process, or due process, that you, that you have to go, to, go through when, you, when you're wanting to fight with, with WBC. Now, if you're mandatory, Right, and you want that fight, and they're messing you about and booking two fights on the trot, like what Wilder and Tyson Fury have done. If that's the case, because Tyson Fury is saying he's the mandatory, isn't he? Now, when you're a mandatory, you can't have a rematch unless, unless you negotiate it. Tyson Fury's fought as a mandatory against Vladimir, but they negotiated a rematch. They negotiated a rematch, and I think on Tyson's part of that contract, he said if Tyson were to lose by a split decision or a mandatory, he'd get a rematch. It worked both ways. Vladimir, if he lost, he just got his rematch. Now, Vladimir did get his rematch, but they never fought. They went for everything else, but they never fought. Tyson left 6.7 million on table. Now, it's no wonder his head went. Tyson schooled Vladimir in a mandatory. He shouldn't have had to mess about with that rematch stuff, but point I'm trying to make here, and I've made it before, Dillian White's not exactly taking the WBC to court, is he? He's not serving any papers on him. On him. We know that because we're good friends with Don Majeski. 
a legendary matchmaker who worked for Don King for decades. He's a good friend of Dennis's. I've actually been out for a meal with Don Majeski. I've got photographs at home. Sat all night with him, talking boxing stories. Fantastic guy. Now, Don Majeski says that Dillian White has not issued legal proceedings against the WBC. Why isn't that? If Dillian White wants to fight Wilder, why hasn't he issued legal letters? Because the WBC are frightened to death once you start issuing legal letters. We're talking about matching and we have billion dollars. They've got billions. Eddie Hearn earned 65 million last year on boxing alone. 45 million, 0.4 last year. Dillian White earned millions last year and he's earned millions this year probably. He's got another pay-per-view. Next is fifth. He's not even been in a European title fight yet. So the point I'm trying to make is this. I don't want to hear about I've been mandatory for thousands of days and all that. I don't want to hear it. There's a process that you go through. If you've got a problem and you can't go around punching people in the face because you go to prison, you go through your lawyer. If Dillian White has had, so if Dillian White's got an issue with WBC, he should go through his lawyer. Has Dillian White had pay-per-view, I'm getting all my, my words mixed up. Has Dillian White had pay, step aside money? Has he been paid step aside money? If he's been paid step aside money, if it, right. if Dillian White's been paid step aside money, right? What does what does that mean? If 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 he's been if he's been paid, right? If he's been paid step aside money, what does it mean? It means that he don't want to fight Wilder, doesn't it? Nobody's saying that he's not good enough to beat Wilder. We're not saying that. Dillian White's got power and he's got skills. He's got more skills than Wilder, but not as much power as Wilder. But he's also tailor made for Wilder, isn't he? If Derek Chisora's hitting you, and if Parker's dropping you, and Rivers dropping you, what's Wilder going to do? If Dillian White's got a brain cell in his head, he'll take that Joshua fight quick as that. Because what happened is this, and I've heard back off somebody who knows Eddie, and kid who told me. I told him I was going to say this, and he said, Oh, don't mention my name, Porky, please. Porky, don't mention my name. So I'm going to tell you straight. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mention it now, because it'll, it'll come back on this kid. But what I will say is this. Dillian White. Dillian White don't want to fight Wilder, does he? Do you know what? I am going to tell you. I am going to tell you. Dillian White tried to play poker with Eddie Hearn. Not like I do. And I stood poker. None of that. No, what he tried to do, he tried to play, he tried to play the game with Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn... And a lot of people got into Dillian White's head. Probably other promotional teams went into his head saying Eddie's got nowhere to go now. He's told everybody that Dillian... He's let everybody know, the ones in the know, that Dillian White's going to fight Anthony Joshua at Wembley. They had the dates booked. What happened? Dillian White thought, oh, he's got a date booked. He thinks it's nailed on. Well, Brat fired, didn't it? Uh, Dillian White tried to play poker with Eddie Hearn. But the numbers that Joshua were trying to create on IFL and other platforms, he weren't doing numbers, and the general feel were that Anthony Joshua, the British public were a bit fed up with him, to be honest. Povetkin, Tackham. You know, Charlie Martin, Eric Molina. How many people has Joshua fought now over 35, age over 35? 
How many people? I mean, I'm, here, I'm even hearing stories that Derek Chisora could be a mix to fight. Joshua, if he fights, oh, if he beats Usyk, but then again, he'd deserve it, wouldn't he, if he beat Usyk? The point I'm trying to make is this. Getting back to what I was talking about, Dillian White was devastated. Devastated when Eddie Hearn called his bluff and went to New York, didn't he? For Miller. Miller messed up, he ended up with Ruiz. And when they got into a position where it could have been White, he was saying, oh, I, ain't, can't, I ain't got camp, I had long enough camp and all that. You don't have to make weight as a heavyweight. Gillian White against Joshua, I make him a favourite before the Saudi incident. Since Saudi, Joshua's added more to his game as a boxer and he'll stay out of the pocket. He didn't want, it's like he's gun shy. But Dillian White, I think, since he fought Parker, I think after round seven, round eight against Parker, that worked best to Dillian White. I know. Since then, he's been dropped by Parker, dropped by Rivers, and he's fought a stiff. I know it sounds harsh, and I sometimes I put it a bit harsh, don't I? And I just have to tell the truth, and I don't want to fall out with anybody. It's like... I know, I, I'll, I'll, I've got a lot of respect for Jimmy Tibbs and Mark Tibbs and they're involved with Dillian White but I have to tell it straight don't I whoever's advising Dillian White on who to fight and where to fight and when I think they've all got it wrong yes he's a pay-per-view fighter so he's done well but it, it's not rocket science is it you go here to earn and then you've got a pal Coogan Cassius up You've got to get to like him and start coming out with certain quotes and lines. You know, you're talking rubbish and oh, you've been eating your Sri Lankan curry and all that. Look, it's all banter. We love a bit of banter, don't we, But It's the same old repeat, recycle scenario. Repeat, recycle scenario. That's what it is. Get on IFL, you get on Boxing Social, you get in the mix. Uh, they've had to do that, haven't they? Because they can't throw any more tables up, can't they? They can't throw any more tables about, can they? But I want to know, has Dillian White had... Has Dillian White had... What's the word now? Has he had step-aside money from WBC? Did Callum Smith get step-aside money from WBC? If not, why were these people over two year mandatory and why did they not fire a legal letter off when Carl Froch were mandatory for Joe Calzaghe Mick Hennessy were into Frank Warren Frank we want this fight Frank we want this fight Joe Calzaghe vacated on the final day on the 270th day that's a fact and you can take that to the bank. That's a fact. 270th day. The belt became vacant. Mick Hennessy and Carl Froch didn't mess about. But yet Callum Smith and Dillian White, they're going years. We aren't getting fired. What's going on? What's going on? How many more lies can the spinners? How many more times can they sit down on IFL and spin these yarns? It's becoming embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, these people are just killing the sport. The best thing about it is, I think Dillian White has got the tools to beat Wilder. I think he had. I don't think he has now. After his last performance, I don't know. Going on his last performance, shocking. Going on Joshua's last performance, he beat Andy Ruiz on points. Fat Andy Ruiz, 21 stone. He beat him on points. Fighting like that while going backwards like Johnny Nelson. Ask Johnny Nelson about throwing a punch and going backwards. It's called a flick. It's like what I do when I'm on punch bag. I flick it. Instead of getting in there, I flick it. So I'm scared the punch bag will hit me back. But look, we want to know why the best belt in the world, the WBC, has not been contested. Now, Anthony Joshua, it looked like he was going to be mandatory for Deontay Wilder. What did they do? 
He went, oh my God. They jumped over to IBF, didn't they? And Eddie manipulated a route. And they've manoeuvred him through choppy waters. Because Wilder's been a world champion for five years now. And not once has Anthony Joshua even looked cl remotely close to fighting Wilder. They'll wait while he gets old. That's the way of the game, I'm afraid. They'll wait while he gets old. Hey, I just want to thank everybody for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. If you leave a nasty comment, I don't get to see them. What, they, what they've done now at channel. All these words like N-O-N-C-E or G-R-A-S-S or F-U-C-K or C-U-N-T or no good whatever and all these horrible words they're all they're all on computer now so if you text anything I, uh, I don't get to see it <laughs> isn't it a good tool that to have but if you do feel that you have to get something off your chest send it to porkycorner at mail.com and somebody will read it but I don't get to see it unless it's a decent email because we only want genuine people getting in touch with the channel we're not going big time we're not going charlie big spud we're just going in the right direction that's all we're doing and we're doing things proper we don't buy subscribers we don't buy views we just work hard and do the job right now you may see some alterations to my porky pig face and stuff like that because somebody else has already got that, so you have to be very careful. It all, all has to be done properly, doesn't it? And there's a lot going on behind the scenes that should have really happened a year ago, but it hasn't. But it's happening now, so that's all good. That's the main thing. The main thing is that I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I've got people behind me, and who knows? I might even... I might even move away from Doncaster, we don't know yet. I might move to Wakefield, I might move to Leeds. I don't know, but at the moment the channel's going fantastic. Shout out to IBF. Nice people at IBF. Shout out to Nick Manners as well. Thank you for your text message, Nick. I'm not on Facebook no more, Nick. So just keep the messages coming on WhatsApp, but I'm not on Facebook. I've not been on Twitter since November the 2nd. I can't overload my brain because I don't cope with too much. So there's no Twitter. December, January, February. Nearly three months, no Twitter, and I've got a lot more time on my hands. There's no Facebook. Uh, I weren't kicked off Facebook, but I think some of the comments that we're getting on there weren't very nice. Because uh, we're not allowed to say truth, are we? But other than that, I'm okay. So, the title of the video, I'm going to call it White uh, WBC White. No, we've already had that one, haven't we? We'll call it White versus Ruiz. Will it happen? Yeah, I think it will happen. I think Andy Ruiz is looking for a, a way back, but how many more people does Dillian White have to fight that are Joshua's leftovers? It's Fort Parker. Uh, it's Fort Ruiz, it's Fort Parker, sorry. It's Fort him. Yeah, now he's looking at fighting Povetkin or Ruiz. They're Joshua leftovers. Why not just fight Joshua? Instead of his, but then again, he wants to over up as many pay-per-views as he can. But you can have a pay-per-view overload, can't you? If Dillian White loses against Ruiz, the Joshua fight's out the window. You can't keep going through life saying, yeah, the Joshua fight's always there, so I'll have as many pay-per-views as I want because that fight's always there. No, it is not always there. The Joshua fight's not always there, Dillian, in my opinion. So you've got to be very careful what you, uh, how you play this game. You've got a fantastic training team around you. And a fit Dillian White is a top five heavyweight all day. But my opinion at the moment, Joshua's up there, isn't he? Because he's got all the belts. Wilder and Tyson Fury. It's hard to say who's best, isn't it? Because everybody can be made a case. 
Them three stand out on their own, don't they? You could maybe say Wilder and Tyson stand out on their own, but Tyson's not got a belt, but he's undefeated. Wilder's got one belt, he's undefeated. Joshua's been defeated, he's got four belts. But is Joshua gun shy? Yeah, I'd say he's gun shy. For those new, uh, new to the people who are new to the channel, or some people that are now in Leeds, females, gun shy means, porky demonstration, Gun shy is when you've been knocked out and then you come back after you've been knocked out. And you, and you, and you don't want to come forward and pressure to, for the knockout. You're going to go on back foot and just pick and poke and, you know, or do that. Or I prefer to do this, you know, like Carl Frott. Like that. And he whips it up front waist, doesn't he? Like Groves. But no, getting back to that, I think Joshua's gun shy, which means he's on the back foot and he just wants to score points. And he don't want to go to knockout. He don't want to engage and open up. I think he's gun shy. I agree with Mick Whale and Josh Whale that he's gun shy. And so they're going to match him accord accordingly. They'll keep him earning as much money as he can. Will they go out to Saudi again? You bet they will. Are they bothered about the British fans? No, they're not. They're bothered about money. Joshua's been knocked out, so he's very, very vulnerable. They'll want to keep him earning, and it will be business as usual. You might even see some of the belts vacated, and Eddie Hearn coming out saying, no, it's not about belts, we've had all belts. It's about big fights for the fans. That's what you're going to hear. It's his job as a promoter. Uh, I can't be too critical of him, because... If it were Dennis, would I say anything now? I'd just get on with my job, wouldn't I? I wouldn't like it. So, does that make me one of them? No, I don't think it does because some of, I'm not going to say how, how I speak to Dennis is wrong, but some of the discussions we have and disagreements we have, Frank Smith at Matchroom would not have, would not disagree with Eddie Earn on a lot of things he says. I disagree with Dennis on a lot. And that's probably why I'm in a really, really good position at this time in my life because I've been with him five years and I just say it as I see it, don't I? He knows if he asks me something. If Dennis asks me something, he'll get the same answer off me or Michelle. She's been there 12 years, I've been there five. If he asks Rami, his schoolmate, something, he'll, uh, he's on the video in Bulgaria, the Dennis Hobson Summit meeting with me, me and Dennis, he's on that video. Rami will tell him straight, Razor will tell him straight, Gary Gillette, Razor will tell him straight, so will Rami, so will I, so will other people, John Daly, Clinton Woods, Chris Smedley, they'll all tell him straight, and that's where they've been mates years, years, isn't it? These people will tell it straight, they're not going to say yes Dennis, no Dennis, three bags full Dennis, like some people who, when they first get to meet Dennis, they're like nodding dog, like that, no Dan. Brilliant Dennis, yes Dennis. I'm like that. No. No. No, I don't agree with you. That's just how I am. But, so that's basically it really. So, Dillian White. Does he want to fight Wilder? No, I don't think he does. Has he had step of side money? I don't know. I don't know. I doubt it, but I don't know. Uh, the WBC, should they be called We Be Crooks? Well, they seem to make it up as they go along, don't they, really? Do I feel sorry for Dillian White? Yeah, a little bit, because I think if Eddie Earn had really wanted to put Dillian White on against Joshua, he'd have just paid that extra few quid money and got him on. But Eddie Earn also did that to Carl Frotch, didn't he? When Carl Frotch wanted to fight Chevez in Vegas, the fight were on the table. But Bob Aram wanted a million dollars to walk away from Chavez's contract, one million dollars, because he had a fight left with him. So that's what he'd been getting out of fight with Chavez, one million. So Eddie signs Chavez now, and he'll be getting one million. So... <laughs> All right, so I've got a meeting now, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Uh, shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright, peace out.